If you've been a fan of this channel for a while, you'd have noticed that 99% of the time I'm using C++ with Visual Studio on Windows. While this is great for many reasons, there is one massive problem. It pretty much only works on the Windows operating system. What if you want to write an application that runs on other platforms like Linux or Mac? What if you want to test your code with a different compiler? What if you want to use a different IDE or text editor to write your C++ applications? Well, in today's video, I'm going to answer all of those questions and much more. By the end, you'll be able to write cross-platform C++ programs with any editor and compiler of your choosing. So be sure to stick around. You're obviously watching this video because you're interested in programming, and I really love that. So I'd like to let you in on a little secret. Programming isn't just about writing code all day. That would be extremely boring. Instead, programming is actually a way of thinking and problem solving, which is exactly why this video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online learning platform that helps you get smarter every single day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. Brilliant is designed to be uniquely effective. Each of their thousands of lessons are filled with hands-on problem solving, allowing you to play around with the concepts that you'll be learning. This is much better than spending hours sitting through a bunch of boring lectures. Brilliant's lessons take a first principles approach to learning, helping you build your knowledge from the ground up. You'll be able to learn complicated topics interactively in the perfect bite-sized chunks that keep you engaged. With Brilliant, you'll become a better thinker and problem solver with each lesson. Whether you're learning how to code, designing electrical circuits, building formulas, or even trying to run simulations with data. So what are you waiting for? To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash CAS or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click on the link in the description down below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching and let's get back to the video. All right, uh, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to the more interesting part of this video where we're actually gonna talk about all of the tools that you can use for cross-platform C++ development. And I'm also gonna give you a little bit of a CMake uh, tutorial, just a simple one for the introduction. So let's talk about this. First of all, the subject of this video is CMake. And the reason that it is CMake is because this is the most popular cross-platform build system for C and C++ and a plethora of other languages. And I'd rather teach you, you know, the thing that everybody's using because if you go and look at pretty much any cross-platform C++ project on GitHub, it's going to be using CMake. No matter what platform you're on, go ahead and install this. And it's pretty simple. You're going to head over to CMake.org, link down below, and you're going to hit the download button. Once you're here, I don't recommend installing version 4.0 because it is still in the pre-release phase. It's still in the testing phase. Uh, it's not widely adopted yet. So I recommend you scroll down a little bit and you find the latest stable version, which is still 3.3.1.6. Go ahead and install that. In my case, I'm on Windows, so I installed it with the Windows. Windows X64 installer, but depending on what platform you're in, you're on, go ahead and install it. Once that's done, you'll know it's installed when you open up a terminal and you type cmake dash dash version and this, uh, yeah, okay, you need to spell it correctly, cmake dash dash version. And as you can see, I have 3.31.6, which is the version that I'm gonna be using for this video. Now, let's talk about the competitor to CMake, the one that I'd recommend, which would be Meeson. I think that's how it's pronounced. I have no fucking idea. Anyway, this is very similar to CMake, but it's a lot newer. And unfortunately, it hasn't been adopted very much yet. But after this tutorial, and after you kind of get a bit more acquainted with CMake, if you decide that you don't like it, go ahead and check out Meeson, because I highly recommend it. I've messed around with it a little bit, but not too much. And I prefer using CMake because that's what everybody else is using. Anyway, let's talk about cross-platform text editors that support CMake. So the first one that I recommend is Visual Studio Code. The only downside to this is that it's made by Microsoft and I don't necessarily like Microsoft, but it is a good text editor. It has a nice GUI, it has all sorts of extensions, and obviously it supports CMake. And it is completely cross-platform. You can run this on Linux, Windows, or Mac. So go ahead and download that because this is what I'm going to be using for this video but if you don't like it there are other options the other option is visual studio now i know in the beginning of the video i said that visual studio uses a solution system and that's very true but visual studio also does have cmake support so if you really really like using the purple visual studio then go ahead and use it because you can right just open up a cmake project with visual studio and i will demonstrate how you do that a little bit later but either way if you are on windows you probably do want to install visual studio because it comes with the microsoft visual c compiler if i go ahead and 
modify my installation over here. Installing desktop development with C++ gives you all of the Windows build tools. And there's a very interesting thing down here, which is the Clang tools, but we'll talk about that in a moment. The next editor I recommend is, of course, C-Line. C-Line is, once again, completely cross-platform. Oh, by the way, Visual Studio is not fully cross-platform. This is only supported by Windows, and you can use it on Mac, but only for uh, C-sharp development. And this video is about C++, so this only works for Windows. The next cross-platform one is C-Line, but the problem with C-Line is that it is paid, right? As you can see here, they are offering a 30-day trial. But if you happen to be a student or a teacher, and you have a way to demonstrate that, like a student card or an email or something, you can get it completely for free, right? You can get a free one year uh, license and you can keep renewing that as long as you are a student. So if that applies to you, go ahead and get C-Line. I have no complaints about it. It's a great editor for C and C++ and it is fully um, centered around CMake. So that is a benefit. Next, for all of you uh, crazy people who don't want to use Visual Studio Code who are on Mac OS, uh, there is Xcode. Xcode does support CMake, so you'll be able to use your CMake projects, your cross-platform projects on it. I've never personally used it because I don't have a Mac and I don't necessarily plan on getting a Mac. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that. Now that we've gone over all of our text editors, let's talk about the compilers that you can use. So I've already mentioned the Microsoft Visual C compiler, which comes with Visual Studio when installing um, the desktop development with C++ module. But the other compilers that are available, oh, well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. You only want the MSVC compiler if you are on Windows because it literally only works for Windows. There are other cross-platform compilers that you can use. The first one is GCC. GCC is the GNU compiler collection. This is the standard compiler for uh, Linux, right? But it does work on Windows and on Mac if you can run it inside of a virtual machine, which you can on Windows with the MySys2 uh, system, and you can on Mac with something called Homebrew. But once again, I don't use Mac, so I don't know what that is. Anyway, that's GCC. Uh, the other option is Clang, right? Clang is a C language front end from LLVM, right? So Clang is another very good option. And Clang, you can install on Windows pretty easily. Once again, in Visual Studio, you're going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit and find C++ Clang tools for Windows. So in this video, I'm going to be using CMake with Visual Studio Code, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate how to compile your program with both the Microsoft Visual C compiler and with the Clang compiler all through this Visual Studio installation. But let's say you're using MySys2 to uh, build your programs with uh, GCC. It would be a very, very similar situation, and I'll explain exactly what changes. So now that I've rambled about all of this for long enough, I think, let's go ahead and get into actually making our first cross-platform C++ CMake program. Project. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code and CMake to do this. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call it Epic Test. And it goes without saying that you do need to go ahead and install CMake and install Visual Studio before you can follow this part of the tutorial. So go ahead and do that and come back when you're ready. I'm going to make a folder called Epic Test on my desktop just for simple demonstration purposes. And I'm going to go into it, right click and open with code. If you don't have this option, you can right click and open in terminal and then just type code dot like this, that'll open the folder up in Visual Studio Code. And if you still don't have that option even, then go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code, go to this file and then open folder like this and just open up the folder to get you started. Now in Visual Studio Code, to make this work with C++ and to make it work with CMake, we need to head over to this extensions tab right here. This tab might be on the side for you. If it is, go ahead and go into it anyway. And you're gonna need two extensions. The first one is going to be the C++ extension from Microsoft. This is a cross-platform C++ extension, even though it is made by Microsoft. You'll see here on Windows, it supports MSVC, Clang and GCC. Linux, it supports Clang and GCC. Mac OS, it supports Clang and GCC. Notice how MSVC is only for Windows. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate these two, right? So at least one of them is going to be cross-platform, okay? The other one you're going to need, the other extension, is going to be the CMake extension. Now, when you type CMake, you're going to get a whole bunch of options. All you actually need is this one right here, CMake Tools by Microsoft. Um, you used to have to install both of these at one point in time, but now the CMake Tools extension has consumed the CMake extension and it offers language support. So there's no reason to have both of them installed. So that's it. You just need the CMake Tools extension and then you need the... C++ extension from Microsoft that I mentioned earlier. So go ahead and install those two and then restart your Visual Studio Code and come back into your empty folder where we're going to create our project. Now, the first step to creating any CMake cross-platform project is to make something called a CMakeLists.txt file. 
Okay, this file is pretty special because it is going to basically be the equivalent of the .sln file with Visual Studio. It's going to tell us how to build our project. Well, we're actually gonna tell it how to build our project. But before we do that, let's actually go ahead and write our main file, just a, a, a simple Hello World program. In our Epic Test folder, we're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna name that SRC for source. I want you to go ahead and add a new file and that's gonna be main.cpp. And let's go ahead and make a very simple Hello World program. So include IO stream. Then we're going to have int main return zero. And above that, we're going to go ahead and standard C out Hello cross platform C. Cool. Now that we have that, you'll notice that there is basically no way to run this. That's because our thing is not set up yet, our whole project. So now we need to go into cmakelist.txt and let's get started with basically the most basic cmakelist you can ever make, just for demonstration purposes. Every single cmake project has to begin with this line, cmake minimum required and then capital version. And in here, we are going to put in the minimum required CMake version for this project, right? So this exists for compatibility reasons. And I'm gonna give you a pretty general version over here. I usually go with 3.12, especially for this project. It's simple, it's a, it's quite an old version, but it has every feature we need right now to make a very simple project. But now one thing to keep in mind is that the newer versions of CMake are going to be using a different format of versioning. So right now, this is how most uh, CMake projects look, but it's moving towards this where you have you add the two dots and then you give another version, right? So you actually want to give a range of versions. So we are saying that our project is going to work from version 3.12 all the way to 3.31, which is the exact version that I have installed, right? So uh, depending on what version you have, go ahead and give it a range that you feel comfortable with. But if you don't know anything about this, this is going to work just fine. Now, after that, the next version, sorry, the next instruction that we need is we actually need to make our project. And that's done with project. And then we need to give our project a name. So let's go ahead and call it Epic Test. Now this can be in or outside of, what are these called, quotation marks. It doesn't actually matter, but I like to put them in quotation marks because it looks a bit nicer. So project Epic Test. And the next parameter this is gonna take is actually the language of our project. So in our case, we're making a C++ project, which is gonna be CXX. Now we want to set our project standard, right? Because saying C++ is pretty general, right? Are we using C++ 11? Are we using C++ 20, 23, etc. In this case, we want to use uh, C++ 20. So to do that, we're gonna say set CMake CXX uh, standard, and we're gonna set it to 20, just like that. On the next line, we're gonna do the same thing. Set CMake CXX standard, and this time we're gonna use standard required and we're gonna set that to on. You can also set it to true or even one, I think will work as well, but I'm just gonna go with on because it makes the most sense in terms of English. Now, the only thing left to do is to say add executable and we're gonna use our project name, which we set up here, right? So you have two options here. You could either write the name again, like Epic Test, or you can be smart about it and you can use the global variable that is set when you actually create the project, right? So a variable called project name gets set when you use this project thing and you have to use the project instruction. So how you use variables in CMake is use the dollar sign, squiggly brackets, and then the name of the variable. Once again, this is a, a global variable called project name. And then now all we need to do is actually add the files that consist of our project. So that's gonna be source slash main.cpp. Once again, you can choose whether you want this in quotation marks or not. I like to put in quotation marks because it changes the color of uh, these things and it looks a bit nicer. Go ahead and save that. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is how do we set the compiler that we want to use? Well, if you check out the bottom of the screen here, I have Visual Studio Community 2022 release. This is because I've done this lots of times before. It already knows what compiler I want to use. But if I click on this, you'll see here, it gives me all the compilers that are installed on my computer. If you have recently installed a compiler, it's not gonna show up here. You have to go ahead and click the scan for kits button, which is gonna go and recursively scan for all your stuff. But basically to select a compiler, we're gonna click the button down here. And I'm gonna demonstrate using two compilers but we're gonna start off with the general Microsoft Visual C compiler for X64, the 64-bit one, which is this one, right? So I'm gonna select that to begin with, but in a moment, I'll demonstrate how to do this with Clang as well, right? So let's select that compiler because that's the one that we want. And if we come back to our main.cpp, you'll see we have no errors or anything like that. So let's go ahead and click this little play button down here. 
And just like that, we have Hello Cross Platform C++. Isn't that pretty cool, right? So let's switch up our compiler just to be very interesting. Let's go ahead and change this to the Clang uh, version 19, uh, Microsoft, whatever, whatever, whatever compiler. And as you look here, CMake is going to go ahead and rewrite all our build files and configure the project. And if we click the play button once again, it just compiled and ran our project with a completely different compiler. Just to prove to you that this is kind of cross-platform, I'm not actually going to demonstrate this on Linux or anything like that because I don't have a Linux installation right now, not even on WSL, but let's close out of Visual Studio, sorry, Visual Studio code. And let me demonstrate to you that this also works with Visual Studio because Visual Studio also has CMake integration. So let's open this project with Visual Studio. As you can see, Visual Studio has now opened up and we still have our CMake list.txt. Yeah, so as you can see, it actually has a different form of syntax highlighting. Once again, we can hover over the project name variable and it says name of the project given to the project command, which we did up here. Once again, it still tells us all the parameters. Very nice to actually use uh, with either of these programs. Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio. But anyway, to run it, it's a very similar process. We just go ahead and hit the play button and that's gonna go ahead and run our project. Hello, cross-platform C++. Let's say you wanted to debug your project. Well, we can set a breakpoint and we can run it just like that. And as you can see, we have hit our breakpoint with CMake. And this is exactly the same in Visual Studio Code. So yeah, I think that almost wraps up our situation over here, but I would like to show you one more thing. This is enough CMake for you to make pretty much any project, any simple project that you want. But uh, I would like to give you another trick over here. As you see, we had to directly add which source file our program has. So let's go ahead and add another source file, for example. We're going to make an example.cpp and we're going to make an example.hpp. In here, we're going to create a simple function void print something. And we're gonna go ahead and define that in the source file. So let's go ahead and include example.hpp. Create the definition of void print something like this. And we are going to include IO stream over here as well so that we can actually print. And it's standard C out something. Uh, should use the correct uh, syntax over here would be a good idea. So very, very simple demonstration of a function that is defined in another set of files, right? Now in main.cpp, let's go ahead and include example. And let's try and print something. And we should run into an error when we try and build this now. Yes, so we ran into an error. Undefined symbol void cdecl uh, print something, right? And that's because we haven't added the example.cpp source file to our actual build over here, which is a bit of a problem. It would be extremely annoying if every time you add a file to your project, you have to go source example.cpp. Just to demonstrate to you that this works, uh, we do that, save it, build. Now you'll see that it builds and runs. So let's run it. There we go, we have hello cross platform C++ and it prints something. But this is obviously not the best way to go about doing this stuff. So let me show you a trick. I'm gonna say file glob, and now we need to give the name of uh, the glob that we are creating. So let's call this a, uh, epic test source files. And the files that we are going to add are gonna be src forward slash asterisk dot C++. Right, so this is going to add every single C++ file in the source directory. It's gonna add this to this variable called epic test source files. Just to be safe, we can also go ahead and add src slash uh, star, sorry, asterisk HPP, just to add the HPP files, but those aren't actually necessary, but we might as well do it. And now we can just replace this uh, with another variable. So once again, it's gonna be the dollar sign, squiggly brackets, and we're gonna use epic test source files like this. And what that's gonna do is every time you add a file to the source directory, it's gonna automatically add this to your executable. And just like that, if we now go ahead and run it, you can see that it runs perfectly well. Let's switch back to the normal Microsoft Visual C compiler and let's r try run it again. And as you can see, it runs perfectly well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that just about wraps up my very simple introduction to cross-platform C++. I hope you can see that it is pretty useful. You'll be able to use this on pretty much any platform. And uh, I would like to make a full tutorial basically using STL in the future. So if you would like to see that, let me know. A little uh, game engine sort of tutorial with STL cross-platform would be pretty cool, I think. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Shout out to my sexy patrons. Subscribe and like for more content and cheers and peace out ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye.